So the RTX 3070 is my favorite Ampere card, and that's because I mostly game at 1440p, and I just care about getting 60 FPS in the most demanding titles, which the RTX 3070 can do pretty much all the time. Now, one criticism that people have with this card is that it has 8GB of VRAM. I think people are still wondering whether that is enough now and also going forward. So today we're going to look at ways to monitor VRAM and we're going to look at two pieces of software, MSI Afterburner and also Special K. And we're going to look at a range of games uh, such as Resident Evil Village and also Microsoft Flight Simulator to see how much VRAM they actually use. Okay, so if you like this video, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. And we have a Discord server, so come along and join us there. And I'll leave a link in the description below. Let's talk about MSI Afterburner and Special K and talk about the differences between the two pieces of software. When you use MSI Afterburner, there are a number of ways to display the memory usage. As you can see here, these are all the options available to you as they are actually named in the program. Though I believe the only one turned on by default is memory usage. To turn the others on, you need to head into settings, the monitoring tab, and it will be under the second section, active hardware monitoring graphs. If they're not there, you'll have to scroll all the way down to the bottom and find them and bring them up. And if they're still not there, you'll have to activate the GPU.DLL plugin by accessing this little box with three dots, though I believe you don't have to do that anymore. To make them show up in-game on the on-screen display, tick the checkbox for each one, and you can also override the group name as you wish. Here, I've labeled them exactly the same for the purposes of this video. This memory usage as shown here is tracked based on the amount of VRAM the drivers allocates the game. And MSI Afterburner is using a Direct3D API called D3D KMT to source the information. To put it simply, the game asks for a wide range of textures and assets from storage and puts them into the video memory, the VRAM. This number can vary based on what the game wants to store in VRAM. Memory usage process appears to actually be closer to what gamers are interested in, the actual VRAM used by the game and GPU at any moment in the game. MSI Afterburner also has a stat called GPU Dedicated Memory Usage and also one for Process. From the testing I did for this video, these are really similar to Memory Usage and Memory Usage Process. So I think it is safe to say you can opt for one or the other, but for the purposes of this video, I've left them both on. Shared Memory Usage is pretty easy to explain. That's the amount reserved for other software running that also uses VRAM. I found an interesting post by Alexei Nikolaychuk, aka Unwinder, the author of Afterburner and RTSS on YouTube. He writes, And please, stop talking about allocated VRAM versus real VRAM usage. Those terms are technically incorrect and misinforming. Those who generated such names have no complete understanding of how it is working in reality. Any kind of memory usage monitoring is based on allocation tracking. Real usage is nothing but exactly the same allocation, but limited to just a game process. Game is not the only process running in your system and consuming VRAM. Browsers do it, desktop window manager do it, background apps like Steam do it, background video recording services do it, etc, etc. And what you call allocated RAM is simply a cumulative value of such real usages for all processes running in background. So for Alexi, memory usage monitoring is based on allocation tracking. Real usage is still allocation, but just limited to the game process or what the game is using at the time. Let's move on to Special K by Caldean. Special K is a piece of software that injects itself into the graphics pipeline and includes a range of mods, such as a frame rate limiter or resources monitoring. But today we're just going to focus on the VRAM usage monitor. Caldean says Special K uses DXGI APIs and includes tracking on the current usage and budget. In his words, when you measure VRAM that way, the only question that needs answering is, is current usage less than or equal to budget? If that comes back true, your application fits entirely in the VRAM the driver has acquisitioned for it to use. The second, current usage goes above budget. You have run out of VRAM and you're in real trouble. So essentially Caldean says DXGI budgets and measuring usage and budgets are a better metric 
then MSI Afterburner's method of measuring from allocation tracking in Direct3D APIs. However, Unwinder says that memory allocation per process is essentially memory usage. Though, of course, this may also be a case of a developer preferring their own method. As I'm not a developer and just a fan of PC gaming, I don't think it's my place to state which method is more correct. The only thing I wanted to do was explain as best as I could the differences between the two ways of monitoring VRAM usage and where they're derived from, and if you have thoughts on this, leave a comment below. I'd also truly appreciate it if Unwinder or Chaldean wanted to comment with any thoughts of their own. I want to show both MSI, Afterburner and Special K working together, and we have a few games that do this such as Resident Evil Village, Metro Exodus Enhanced Edition. I wasn't able to get it to work with some other games I want to show like Cyberpunk 2077, Doom Eternal and Red Dead Redemption 2, so for those we'll just have to go with MSI Afterburner. Special K has a list of games it's compatible with, so I think maybe these games just aren't compatible. We'll start with Resident Evil Village. I think this is a curious title because it has an in-game meter in the graphical options that show how much VRAM is used. I've noted in my Village Ray Tracing comparison video, the Ultra Texture Pack could use 12GB of VRAM, which would either straight up not work or cause serious issues for the RTX 3070. So obviously in this video, I'm going to try and turn everything up and crash the game. But to my surprise, even with the Ultra Texture Pack, the game stays well under 8GB of VRAM coming in at around 6.5GB at 1440p and 6GB at 4K on MSI Afterburner and around 6GB at 1440p and 4K on Special K. It is interesting that 1440p showed slightly higher VRAM on MSI Afterburner. I tested two locations, the village area and the castle area, however it's possible some sections of the game may use more VRAM but it shows that the in-game meter seems to be an estimate of potential peak VRAM allocation or usage but not the typical VRAM usage. Next I tried Metro Exodus Enhanced Edition. This is a game I knew would run under 8GB of VRAM but I did want to test out how close MSI Afterburner and Special K were when tracking VRAM usage and it turns out it was very close. At 1440p it uses 5GB of VRAM, while at 4K it uses 6GB of VRAM, and notice how the VRAM usage stays the same while for many other games it fluctuates more. A Medieval was interesting as it didn't actually give me an option to use full screen, and no option to use 4K without using full screen, so I had to use DX11 mode which meant no ray tracing. Aside from that, you do get to see that this game absolutely flies without it. At 1440p, it uses about 2.5GB of VRAM, and at 4K, it uses about 3.5GB of VRAM. Next, I want to show Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020. The game has its own dev tools with a VRAM monitor, and this runs pretty close to MSI Afterburner and Special K's VRAM monitoring. The dev tool shows two numbers, I'm presuming that one is usage and the other is budget. Typically the usage does stay under the budget, but I have been able to get the usage over the budget, where sometimes the usage goes over 7GB while the budget is still 6GB. The game does slow down, but that could also be because the game is running in 4K anyway, so it's hard to tell if it's just because of the VRAM usage. In these next few games, these games are no longer compatible with Special K, or I was not able to boot them despite trying to whitelist them, so these games will only be using MSI Afterburner's VRAM monitoring. In Control, at 1440p with ultra settings and ray tracing and no DLSS, VRAM sits at around 5GB and at 4K VRAM usage is around 6.2GB. In Cyberpunk 2077, at 1440p VRAM usage is at 6.5GB and 4K is at 7.5GB and that's with everything turned on ultra, full ray tracing and no DLSS. Though the frame rate plummeted to unplayable levels of 2 to 3 FPS with frame times at a ridiculous 300 milliseconds. So what happens if you select graphic settings that go over the VRAM usage? In Doom Eternal at 1440p Ultra Nightmare, VRAM usage is around 7.2GB while in 4K Ultra the game uses around 7.1GB of VRAM. Trying to use 4K Ultra Nightmare settings, the game will send an error message saying there's not enough VRAM. 
In Red Dead Redemption 2, by leaving it on Ultra Preset, at 1440p the game uses about 5.7GB of VRAM, while at 4K it uses about 6.7GB of VRAM. However, cranking up every setting to Ultra manually results in a message where there's not enough VRAM. For both Doom Eternal and Red Dead Redemption 2, I'll argue in both cases that right now it's probably not such a big issue, given that it takes 4K Ultra Nightmare settings in these games to break the 8GB VRAM limit. It's hard to say when in the future games will continually break the 8GB VRAM limit. If Nvidia brings out 40 series cars with higher VRAM amounts, then developers may start developing for that. Though according to AMD presentation slides, a few games like Dirt 5, Horizon Zero Dawn and Call of Duty Cold War already have begun going higher. Though of course these games just work fine on Nvidia cards, but you may have to tweak some settings. So based on the testing that I've done in this video and also just using the card for the last 3 or 4 months, I think 8GB of VRAM is fine for this generation and I think you're really only going to go over it if you use Ultra Nightmare settings which in Doom Eternal looks pretty close to Ultra anyway. So I think that if you're somebody who upgrades every generation, so you're going to upgrade from the 3070 to the 4070, I think you're going to be fine. But if you're somebody who upgrades every other generation, so you're going to skip the 40 series, I think what you're going to find is that Nvidia is going to update the 40 series cards and then they're going to have more VRAM amounts. But at the same time, I will also say that I think your um, shading performance in these cards is going to age faster than your VRAM amounts. And what I mean by that is that you're probably going to have to drop your settings anyways next generation. So what I found with the 10 series card, with the 1070, I had to start dropping settings um, in on my 1070 from say ultra to say high settings. Uh, otherwise, I wouldn't be able to hit 60 FPS. And you're going to find the same thing with your 3070 series card in the next generation. So I think overall, I think your shading performance is going to limit you more than your VRAM amount anyway. But that's just what I think. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. Do you think 8GB of VRAM is enough going forward? Uh, put your comments down below and I look forward to hearing them. And uh, if you like this video, make sure to hit the like button and also to subscribe to this channel. And I'll see you guys in the next one.